What's up, everybody? Mr. Mira here. And today we're actually going to do the same thing that we did last video. We're just going to use different software instead of making a repository on GitHub. We're going to do it off of GitHub, the website through software and then push it up to GitHub. This is the process that I normally take to make all these repositories. I do them in either the IDE that I use or Sublime Text, Sublime Merge as well. It depends on what I need to do. If it's something simple like just making a readme, it's all done in Sublime. If I need unit testing, if I need more information, I guess I could say if I need more like palm files with Maven and stuff, I'll do it through my IDE. But to get started, I start on GitHub actually. And I start on GitHub and what is this oh this is the old one okay i start on github and i do new to make a new repository and we'll call this what do we call the other one demo uh tut cs2 again description if you want to private and i leave this unchecked last time we checked it because we were doing everything on github i'm leaving this unchecked and i'm just going to hit create repository it's going to look a little different now so now it's telling us okay this is your process to do the repository it says, and this is all command line stuff. Now, normally I do a lot of this stuff through the command line. I'm just more comfortable in it, but on my district computer, I don't have access and students don't have access to command line stuff that we would need to do this. So I have to come up with software solutions. That's why I do a lot of stuff through the IDE with them to show them how to do it. But I just do it all through the IDE menu options and stuff like that. Not the greatest solution, but it gets the job done for what I need to do. If you're comfortable with command line, you can follow these instructions. You can look up tutorials on how to do everything that I'm going to show off here. I'm going to show it off through GUI stuff. So I'm going to leave this page open or up. I'm actually, I could probably start by, yeah, I could probably start by copying this link. So this is the GitHub link. This is the Git repository. This is our repo. This link right here is our repo. And I'm just going to copy it. Just click on the button, highlight, control C, uh, command C, whatever you need to do. And then I'm going to actually open up Sublime Merge. So I already have this downloaded, installed. It's free. You can download, install it. Uh, so give me a second to open that up. And in Sublime Merge here, I'm going to go to uh, clone repository. So if you're not on this page and it brings up some other menu or something, you can go file clone repository to get to this page. And I'm going to go to, it's going to be tiny, right? Even if I do this, yeah. So I'm going to keep it small. Uh, I'm going to go to my source URL is what I just copied there. And I'm going to actually go to, let's just make a new folder on the desktop. We'll call it like demo. Select that. And you should have whatever the repository name is after as a subfolder inside whatever folder you select. That's a key thing. You want to have each repository in its own folder and keep all your projects or wherever you want to keep them, but they should be in their own folder, not in like a root folder somewhere. You can give it a different name if you want. The defaults are always fine. I just usually keep defaults. And then I just hit clone, let it do its thing. And now I'm good to go here on what I have. So I'm going to actually now open up Sublime text editor. Let's keep all this stuff. So now that I have Sublime open, we can keep all this stuff here. Yeah, we'll keep it like that. In Sublime, I'm going to go to File, Open Folder, and I'm going to find it on my desktop. And I'm going to find the repo folder, and I'm going to hit Select. So I get this pop out on the side here. And I'm going to go File. Um, nah, actually, we'll just start typing. So this is going to be our, we'll call it like Second Demo Assignments. And then I'm going to Save. So the red here means that I haven't saved yet. I'm going to go save. If it doesn't take you into the folder, you want to save inside the repo clone folder. So I want to save in there. And this is going to be my readme.md. So we said, don't give me a readme because I'm actually going to create my own. So readme.md. I'm going to hit save and it's going to have that. And I'm going to say here, um, finish the Java file by putting your name in a print statement. I believe that's what we said in the last video or something like it. I'm going to hit save again to save the file. And you might've noticed here on uh, sublime merge. If you're looking off the screen here, some stuff probably popped up when I made the file and I started saving things. And these are my changes in this repository. So it's already keeping track of things for me. I've untracked files. So I'm going to stage them or add sublime merge here calls it stage IDEs or stuff like that. Or when you do the actual uh, get stuff here, it's add. The actual git command is add, not stage, but a lot of GUI stuff seems to do stage. So let's go, uh, actually, let me pull back up both of those. So I'm going to stage them here. So I added the file to the repository and these are all local changes. So I have added them. 
I have added their snapshot to the staging area. And now in the staging area, if I'm ready, I can make a commitment of everything in that staging area. I can make a commit of that staging area. So I, I don't want to do that yet. Let's actually talk more about the staging area. So I can add some more stuff to the staging area. Let's go make a new file, a public class. We'll call it like SSIG. We'll do static void main. String args, string array of args, go like that. And then we'll do our comments in here. Put, I don't know, put your name in a print, whatever. Uh, save this. This is going to be our ssig.java. Save. And again, you can see popped up here that I have some changes that need to be staged or added to the staging area. So you can stage and unstage stuff all the time, but once you're ready to commit, commit now takes a snapshot. So now we're talking Git lingo. So adding is putting things in the staging area. That's the first step. It's a three-step process to get things on GitHub. Add, commit, push. Adding is putting things in the staging area. They can come and go from the staging area if you need to, uh, or if you make changes, you know, they'll come and go out of the staging area. Once your staging area is ready for a commit, then what happens in Git is that commit takes a snapshot of everything that is in the staging area, what it looks like in the staging area at that time of the commit. And then that snapshot, all those files are then pushed up to GitHub as they were when they were committed. So if you, we can do it quickly here. If we make a, yeah, this video hasn't run long enough. Uh -huh. It's a joke. It has, we can make a commit here and then make some other changes and we'll, we'll see the, those changes unless we recommit won't be on GitHub. So let's make a commit in it project. That's our commit message. And then we'll say like, uh, created readme and Java file. So we'll commit. It's going to ask me what I want my name to be and my email for the push. Uh, we'll do local hit update. And then I have to hit commit again. I mean, I could have set that stuff up earlier, but I'll just hit commit again. And now they're ready to get pushed. So again, this is all just local. Nothing is on GitHub. Nothing is on GitHub. Um, so let me switch back to those two. And to push them in Sublime Merge here, it is repositories push. And then since I already have my origin master kind of set up when I did the clone, I can just hit enter and it will do pushing. And once this kind of goes away, I can go back to GitHub, refresh my page, and we'll see our changes there. But let's actually do like a second comment here. So this file has a new change to it and it's not staged. So I haven't added it and I definitely haven't committed it and I haven't pushed it. So this comment's not going to show up on GitHub and we'll go here. And if I refresh this page, it has my stuff on it. And when I go in here, I'm not going to see that second comment. I only see that first comment. Let's go back again. Remember to make your template repository and then we'll go there. And I just want to show off, uh, even if I stage it and commit it, added a second comment. It's just hanging on my local machine. It hasn't been pushed to GitHub. So it's a three-step process. This hasn't changed. It's still only one comment. It's a, always a three-step project process, add, commit, push. So adding and committing keeps it on your local machine. What all, the only thing that gets it up to GitHub is pushing. So that's something that students usually uh, have trouble doing. Like they might add and commit and then their computer crashes. And if they didn't push, like the commit's still on the local machine only. So that the third part is just as important as the first two when working with GitHub and version control. And then now that I have this second assignment, let's go and let's make a new assignment here quickly to end the video. So next video, let's, uh, what did I say? I said we were going to go from a student view of how this works and yeah, we'll, we'll keep with that. So we'll do a student view of accepting an assignment. I'll send one of these assignments to my demo account, tester account, and we can show off what the students kind of see and then what we see as teachers when they start working on stuff. So until next time, as this is getting created here, everybody have a week.